Hi guys, thank you for joining me. Here's a current image of all the backed up ships there at Long Beach in Southern California. And then we have the Port of Oakland. There's a lot of them here. The green dots are cargo vessels. You can see that here. Um, yeah, I don't know what that one is. Another cargo vessel. So I wanted to know how long it takes to unload a cargo vessel. Uh, here it says a cargo vessel carrying between 5,000 and 8,000 containers. In 2018 would be between 50 to 160 hours. And there's been a lot of complaints from truck drivers. But for some reason now the crane operators that unload these ships are taking their sweet ass times. Uh, now the average wait to unload a vessel there in the port of Los Angeles is 13 days. The Wall Street Journal had a video up. It says here that port officials estimate that 250,000 containers filled with goods are still idling in the waters offshore. As many as 73 container ships have been waiting to unload goods in the port of La Long Beach and Los Angeles this week alone. And they had a drone that flew over and showed some of these vessels that were waiting to be unloaded. Ryan posted on Twitter that they had rented a boat and went out to see what was going on there at one of the ports. Uh, they were at the port of Long Beach. They did a three hour loop and saw that a dozen containers uh, to get unloaded. He said that there are hundreds of cranes and I counted only seven that were operating and those seem to be going pretty slow. The terminals are simply overflowing with containers which means they no longer have space to take in new containers either from ships or land. It's a true traffic jam. Supposedly it takes about 8,000 trucks for a single ship to be unloaded and there's supposedly a shortage of truckers. California has some restrictions going on. Um, and then they've had them for a long time. EPA regulations that only the newer trucks that can pass smog inspection, etc. Um, can do conference there in California. But that was going on pre-pandemic. So nothing's changed there. Supposedly they have two-thirds of the trucks that show up to unload the cargo or, or take the cargo I should say out of the port uh, two-thirds less now showing up but long story short because of the lack of goods we are seeing more and more empty shelves in the markets less food less products and more inflation in my area I've talked to a lot of business owners and they think this shortage of goods is all deliberate and recently they've been blaming the shortages on people hoarding. Which I find it hard to believe that there's more preppers out there. But I think people should be prepping. And I agree, I think this is a reason. Recently, Off the Grid Desert Farming had a video about all the earthquakes that have been occurring there in La Palma. And they all seem to be occurring in a grid-like pattern. Many of you know, know the threat if uh, La Palma slid off into the ocean it would create a huge tsunami that would go around the entire Atlantic uh, maybe like in 10 minutes to the uh, coast of Africa and um, 6 hours to the coast of the United States. One of my followers um, son I believe it is works um, North Carolina, South Carolina, they said that the tsunami would go in maybe 14 to 17 miles if this area where the rift zone is at slid off. It would be a very great threat. Recently today, there was a magnitude 4.7. This here is that rift system. The volcano started as a fault zone which is slowly extending and opening up. It's not a magma chamber where this lava is coming up from. It's coming up from the mantle of the earth. 
and it's got a fault that's slowly widening and lengthening. This rift that's opening up, just like in Hawaii, could create a huge landslide where from here and all the way over could crash into the ocean. So I want to go back to some of these comments about this 4.7. They said that this earthquake was short but intense. Um, there was several landslides and stones and earth in various sections of the park. Another comment says normally the dogs don't bark, but they did. And I wasn't sure if they noticed the earthquake or not. This one here said the building totally shook. So then it dawned on me about this shortage of foods and other goods, about possibilities of why they could be deliberately creating these shortages. I thought about the recent world events that are going on, the conflict over Taiwan with China, China st stealing our um, intellectual property, uh, stealing copyrights, making um, copies of our products about their recent missile test. It was a supersonic missile, flew so low that our satellites, our missile defense system did not pick it up. They did that in August and only recently reported it in the news. Biden shutting down the Keystone Pipeline, which has got gas prices soaring. They're expecting our heating costs to probably double this year. So the only answer I could come up with for the shortage, the inflation, evidently 23% uh, of the population now is skipping a meal because of the high cost of food, is that they know or they're planning for some kind of event, be it an earthquake, be it a war, be it tsunami, so that people will willingly go into a FEMA camp. Part of the agenda to depopulate the world. The United Nations would come in to stop the riots for people panicking. They might go to door to door, not just to take your weapons, but take your food. Send you off to the FEMA camp. Force everyone to get the jab before they're allowed to go into the FEMA camp. Yeah, there's probably a lot of people who not want to live under martial law, who not want to give their children or their grandchildren the jabs. Never let a disaster go to waste. Here's the uh, south side of the volcano and a new vent that opened up. Right now it's just releasing gases. You can see the trees here. And here you can see how it's a fault line that's slowly getting bigger. This is the south side which generally they don't show you. They show you the, you know, the cone up here, um, baby vent, the other vent that opened up. But generally they don't show you the other side. So I seen this early this morning and became aware of this grid pattern from um, off the grid desert farming. And once in a while you'll see a pattern like this across the world. Not very often. I think they've been working on developing this technique either through HARP or maybe something that Tesla developed with his earthquake machine. I don't know. I, I know it sounds far-fetched. I mean, there's multiple earthquakes in each of these spots. Let me come in and show you. Well, that's as far as it'll let me zoom in. All right, so I made the page larger, but you can see there's multiple earthquakes in all these different spots. Look at that. And this is the rift. So, is the next disaster going to be man-made? Is the shortages of products? Well, that's definitely man-made. Um, people aren't going to be able to pay double what they're going to be paying for heating. And if they create a disaster, that will force most of the population into FEMA camps. If I was you, if you have the capability... I would start stocking up on goods. So what are your thoughts? Please put those comments down below. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Please stay safe. And I'll talk to you later. God bless you.